Okay, uh, I had a request under one of my videos. Uh, somebody wanted some information about an amino acid called glycine. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. When you're talking about amino acids, you're talking products of, of protein. In other words, proteins are digested by protein digesting enzymes into amino acids. There's 22 amino acids, nine of which are essential. Uh, amino acids are generally classified as essential and non-essential. Only the essential amino acids are involved in muscle protein synthesis. In other words, to build muscle, you only need the nine essential amino acids included in them are such amino acids as the branch chain amino acids. <clears throat> However, you know, you have to consider that term non-essential because it, it, in some people, the word non-essential, it it'll indicates that it's not important and nothing could be further from the truth. The only reason other amino acids are classified as non-essential are because they can be manufactured or synthesized in the body from other elements, including other amino acids. But they still have very important functions and we, we, we'd all be in big trouble without these so-called unessential amino acids. Some amino acids are what they call conditionally essential, meaning that your body can synthesize them, but under certain conditions, your body can't make enough of these amino acids. Included in that category are, are amino acids such as arginine, uh, glutamine, and taurine. In other words, your body can make these uh, amino acids, but the thing, especially uh, glutamine and uh, taurine, but the thing is that uh, under conditions of stress or certain conditions, you, your body requires more than could be ma manufactured in the body. Glycine uh, is a, as I said, is a uh, non-essential amino acid that can be obtained either through the diet or synthesized from, from, from the amino acid serinine, threonine, or, co or the nutrient choline, or something called gly gly uh, glyoxalate in the liver and kidney. It has the most simple structure of any amino acid. The name glycine refers to the sweet taste. Glycine actually, most amino acids taste awful. For example, arginine has been compared to dog vomit, which makes you wonder, the person who made that statement, has he ever actually tasted dog vomit? But that's another story. But generally speaking, amino acids taste absolutely awful. Glycine is the exception. It's, it's a sweet tasting amino acid, so sweet, that you can, in powdered form, you could add it to a drink and use it as a sweetener. Uh, the, that, and that's where the name comes. Glycine refers to its sweet taste. It exerts anti-inflammatory and anti antioxidative effects, and it's been in inversely associated with several traditional cardiovascular risk factors, including obesity, hypertension, or high blood pressure, and diabetes. A typical high-protein diet provides about 2 grams of glycine daily. Glycine is used for treating schizophrenia. The number, among, among the conditions that glycine can treat are schizophrenia, stroke, sleep problems. I'll get to the sleep problem part later. Benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH, metabolic syndrome, and some rare inherited metabolic disorders. It's also used to protect kidneys from the harmful side effects of certain drugs used after organ transplant transplantation as well as the it could also protect the liver from the harmful effects of alcohol glycine may also be used to reduce the risk of psychosis <laughs> when you, i mean considering what's going on today i think that maybe the uh, maybe people should be taking a lot of people should be taking glycine for that alone other uses include cancer prevention and memory enhancement putting glycine under the tongue may help to limit the brain damage caused by a stroke hold on a second an ischemic stroke, which uh, that, that happens uh, if you take it within uh, six hours of having the stroke. Uh, an ischemic stroke is caused by the blockage of a blood vessel, usually by a clot in the brain. Brain cells beyond the, the obstruction don't receive oxygen and begin to die, causing irreversible damage. Uh, there's another rare condition called isovaleric acidemia, in which certain amino acids are not processed properly by the body. Taking glycine by mouth with L-carnitine might help this condition. Now, of course, uh, uh, a lot of nutrients function as antioxidants, including amino acids, and glycine is one of them. Uh, glycine amino acids 
the other two being cysteine and glutamic acid that make up the endogenous antioxidant glutathione. It's one of the primary antioxidants in the body. It's especially potent in the liver. Among other things, glutathione helps to detoxify oral anabolic steroids and prevent damage to the liver. And again, glycine is one of the three amino acid components of glutathione. Uh, without enough glycine, your body produces less glutathione, which could, ne could ne negatively affect how your body handles oxidative stress over time. In addition, because glutathione levels naturally decline with age, ensuring that you get enough glycine as you get older may benefit your health. <clears throat> Another way, of course, of uh, increasing glutathione, there's two other ways, which I've mentioned in previous videos. One is to use the supplement N-acetylcysteine, and the other is to uh, use a whey protein. The whey protein contains cysteine residues, and of, of course, cysteine is one of the three amino acids that comprise glutathione, so just uh, just drinking whey will also build up you know, your uh, glutathione stores. Uh, another another uh, thing that glycine is involved in is creatine synthesis. Uh, uh, there's again there's three amino acids involved in the production of creatine in the body. That that, inc that, that includes glycine, methionine, and arginine. Those are the three amino acids. Uh, so it's uh, you have to have glycine to manufacture uh, creatine in the body. The body makes about one gram a day. Uh, another very important uh, function of glycine is that it's the primary amino acid in collagen. Collagen is your primary structural protein in connective tissue. Your skin, your hair, your nails, bones, everything, collagen is there. And, 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 and uh, cysteine is the primary amino acid involved in collagen. Every third to fourth amino acid in, collagen, in the collagen structure is glycine. Glycine is also uh, effective for sleep. I've mentioned this in other, other videos. Taking three grams of glycine will help you sleep by lowering body temperature. Uh, the reason why glycine uh, helps you sleep is not only by bo uh, lowering body temperature. See, to fall asleep, your body temperature has to drop. Uh, you know That's why you, you don't want to uh, keep your room too hot or, or what, that you sleep in because it will actually delay sleep onset. But uh, taking the three grams of uh, glycine about maybe an hour before you go to sleep will lower your body temperature. And also, glycine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. In other words, in the brain, it has a relaxing effect. Uh, the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain is GABA, aminobutyric acid, or GABA. But glycine has an independent inhibitory neurotransmitter effect that relaxes you and helps you sleep. When used prior to sleep, glycine speeds the onset of sleep and enhances sleep quality. It decreases daytime sleepiness, and it even improves thinking ability or cognition because the more sleep you have, the better your brain works. Glycine can also help to protect the liver from the adverse effects of alcohol by reducing liver inflammation. In that respect, it might even help, again, with uh, oral anabolic steroids, uh, oral anabolic steroids damage the liver by causing a localized inflammation in the liver. Glycine might might help to reduce some of that inflammation. Uh, in regards to alcohol, uh, one way that uh, glycine helps is by promoting the first pass metabolism of alcohol in the stomach rather than the liver. Uh, alcohol is famous for being absorbed through the stomach, and uh, this in turn helps to prevent the two most common complications of alcohol ingestion in the liver, which is liver cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis is scar in the liver. It's the second stage of liver failure, the first being fatty liver, which is followed by cirrhosis, which, uh, which, which can, can eventually lead to either liver cancer or liver failure. Animal studies show that glycine may be able to reverse liver damage. One 1998 rat study showed that liver cells damaged from alcohol ingestion returned to normal 30% more rapidly as judged by a normalization of liver enzymes when the animals were given glycine compared to a control group of rats with liver damage who were not given glycine. This beneficial effect of glycine may be partially explained by the fact that glycine increases the influx of chloride into cells of the liver called Kupfer cells, leading to diminished tu uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha. Uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha causes liver inflammation, and uh, glycine helps to reduce it. That's how it helps to reduce liver inflammation. Uh, the truth of the matter, however, is this has only been shown in animals. There's no human evidence or co confirmation as of yet. Glycine is also good for your health 
because it's it's utilized. It gets a little complex there when it comes to the health, heart health. It's utilized to catabolize, catabolize or break down excess 5 adenosyl methionine by its remethylation into sarcosine via the <laughs> enzyme glycine N methyl transferase, GMT, and excess hepatic S adenosyl methionine concentrations have been linked to the regulation of apple lipoprotein B expression and very low density lipoprotein formation. Disturbances in these reactions have been associated with lipid accumulation both in the liver and macrophages, which is white blood cells, which further promotes oxidized low-density lipoprotein-induced foam cell formation in the arterial wall. In other words, to put it in simple English terms, glycine helps to prevent the factors that initiate atherosclerosis, which is a thickening uh, and hardening of the arteries that's closely associated with heart attacks and strokes. Glycine also improves the ability to use nitric oxide. This protection by glycine against elevated blood pressure might be attributed to its effect in increasing fatty acid oxidation, reducing intra-abdominal fat accumulation, and circulating nonesterified fatty acids, which have been proposed as links between obesity and hypertension. So apparently glycine is also involved in fatty uh, acid oxidation, and also by uh, in, uh, helping to increase nitric oxide, it prevents high blood pressure, which is also a cardiovascular risk factor. In a 2016 observational study published in the Journal of the American Heart Association that analyzed over 4,101 people with chest pains, higher levels of glycine were associated with a lower risk of heart disease and heart attacks and a 7.4 year follow-up. The people with higher glycine levels also showed a better lipid profile. In other words, they had better cholesterol levels, which also is indicative of lower risk for heart disease. Now, glycine is also involved in another uh, major disease, diabetes. Uh, diabetes is the fourth leading cause of death, and most people who die from diabetes usually die from congestive heart failure. There's a lot of complications with diabetes, possibly limb amputation, uh, brain problems. You age. You also age five times faster when you have uncontrolled diabetes. Glycine has been shown to increase insulin response in people without diabetes. So it's suggested that glycine supplements may improve impaired insulin response in people with two, type 2 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, the problem is that you, uh, people produce enough insulin, but the cells are insensitive to insulin. And uh, glycine might help repair some of that insulin insensitivity. Glycine also stimulates the release of gut hormones uh, uh, such as GLP-1, a glucagon-like peptide 1 that increase the effect of insulin in helping to control blood glucose levels. Uh, of interest to anyone who's working out, glycine may help to prevent muscle loss in mice with, again, these are mouse studies or animal studies, which may or may not be a, a, uh, applicable to humans, but in mice with, me, with me, muscle wasting conditions such as cancer, Research has shown that glycine was able to stimulate muscle growth, whereas leucine, a branch chain uh, amino acid, was not. Now, that's an interesting finding because leucine is usually the key amino acid involved in muscle protein synthesis. Leucine acts as a trigger for all the essential amino acids to initiate a cascade of reactions that involve an upgrade that, 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 really, that really lead to increased muscle protein synthesis. And yet, in this mouse study, the uh, the glycine was actually more effective than leucine in preventing muscle wasting. Whether it does in humans remains to be seen. Now, how can you take glycine? You could take it as a powdered supplement in capsules, or as part of a collagen supplement. In fact, uh, glycine is one of the main, uh, along with proline, is one of the main uh, amino acid uh, active ingredients in collagen supplements. Glycine is safe, and doses up to 90 grams have not caused any side effects. Uh, now, for best results, if you really want to get the most uh, benefits from glycine, it's best to take it alone, away from other amino acids. The reason for this is uh, amino acids compete with uptake. There are certain uh, uh, proteins called amino acid carriers, and uh, they, all the amino acids, certain there's different carriers, but certain amino acids compete to be kind of associated with these uptake carriers. And if you take several amino acids at once, some amino acids will be absorbed better than others. So if you want maximum benefits of glycine, 
take it alone, away from other amino acids. One interesting last fact about glycine is that, uh, you know, they've analyzed comets, you know, meteorites that have landed on Earth, and glycine is always a part of these, uh, of these meteorites that they find. It's also found in, they've analyzed comet dust. Glycine was also uh, included in the comet dust. The, discovered, uh, the discovery of cometary glycine bolstered the theory of panspermia, which claims that the building blocks of, uh, of the life were spread throughout the universe. This is a uh, theory that suggests that, you know, the reason that, that life started on Earth is that possibly a, a meteorite or something like that landed on Earth and it contained the amino acids that are essential to life. And it started again a, a chain of reactions that eventually led to life on Earth. It's an interesting theory, hard to prove, but, you know, just thought I'd throw that in to show how, you know, how impressive glycine is. So that's about it for glycine. Um, if you want further information about nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, including testosterone therapy, growth hormone therapy, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, supplements, women's health and fitness, fat loss techniques that work, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www appliedmetabolics.com 40 to 50 pages every month no ads I'm not trying to sell you anything but information based on my 58 years of study and empirical exp evidence or experience I've trained for that amount of time also I've accumulated a lot of knowledge about things that work and don't work when it comes to training and working out and health in general and I include this all in my applied metabolics newsletter uh, it's all it's written in magazine style. Uh, any technical terms that I I, uh, I have in the newsletter, I quickly explain. So you don't need a science degree. It's not like other digital publications where you feel like you're reading a medical journal, where it's like walking in thick mud to get through it. My uh, my applied metabolics is easy reading. I've been a writer for 43 years, so I know how to write. I have over 7,500 uh, articles that have been published in the past 42 years or so. So, uh, you know, subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, when you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where every day I put new information about nutrition, exercise, science, medicine, and general health. Every day I also answer questions and have discussions on in the Applied Metabolics Facebook private page. Uh, I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics site. Current subscribers are welcome to uh, send me short questions, uh, and I will I will answer them. If you're a current subscriber, I don't answer unsolicited questions. You're welcome to leave comments under this video. Um, I may or may not answer them. It all depends on how much time I have. But anyway, uh, if you want to have the best, where's Bruno's about two feet away from me. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They're the greatest. They're the best all dogs. So take care. Thanks for listening.